Amen. Lord, I ask for the Holy Spirit to anoint your word today. Anoint me. Help me to preach your word and proclaim your word with clarity. And I ask that you would anoint the hearers of the word to hear and give understanding that the Holy Spirit gives on this important truth. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to give you the title and also the, what I'm going to be preaching on. Uh, Colossians 1.27. Thank you. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you. Christ in you. Let that sink in your spirit. Christ in you. What a great truth. What a great New Testament truth and reality. Christ in you. Now, understand the you is plural. It's plural in the original language which means not just person, I mean, not just to one person, but to all believers that he's writing to. So, but yet at the same time, we can say Christ in you personally, right? But Christ in every believer, everyone who has put their trust and faith in Jesus and received him as Savior and Lord, we can have that truth say of us, Christ in you the hope of glory. The, every believer can say that today, Christ in me. Now there's a similar expression and a similar truth in the New Testament where it talks about in Christ and Christ in you. Now I don't know all the shades of differences and nuances as far as what the, the difference is, but they are very similar. But this truth of Christ in you is a beautiful, beautiful, great truth. Christ in you. Say that with me. Christ in you. Christ in you, believer. In you. Now, let me say very clearly at the start what we mean by Christ in you. We do not believe, say that we do not believe that the scriptures is teaching here the Christ principle in us. We, this Oak Park is full of new age stuff. <laughs> I mean, this, this town has a lot of new age influence. And new age teaching is that there's a Christ principle that everybody has. In fact, Jesus, the historical Jesus, had the Christ principle in him. And so this same Christ principle is in everybody. Everybody has this spark of divinity as the teaching goes. That's not what the Apostle Paul is saying here. He's talking about when he says Christ, he's talking about Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, the second person of the Trinity, the one who lived on this earth, the one who died on the cross and ascended to glory, and now his spirit, the same Christ, but his spirit comes to dwell inside of every Christian. Now we're talking about the real Jesus. Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, in you, Christian. In you. When you receive Jesus, Christ enters into your spirit. And Christ, the living Christ, comes to live inside of you, your spirit. What a great truth that is. And you need to remind yourself of that all the time. Christ in me. Christ lives in me. Christ is in you if you're saved. Christ will always be in you if you're saved. And Christ is living in you all the time, 24-7. Now this is the message that I want to give to you today. And this is the message that I want to put on the screen. And the message is simply this. The truth of this, the truth of this Christ in you, the hope of glory, 
has many dynamic applications to every believer in Jesus. This truth of Christ in you, the Christ in me, this truth has many dynamic applications that we need to understand and comprehend because it has, it's like a pebble that you throw in the water and has all these ripples effect. That's what happens with this truth. When you understand this truth, that Christ is in you, all these ripple applications of what this means to me as a Christian, that we need to understand these powerful dynamics. Number one application, Christ in you. Say it again, Christ in you. Say Christ in me. Christ in you means you have his righteousness. Christ in you means you have his righteousness. His righteousness. Christ's righteousness in you. Christ in you, I have his righteousness. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.21, He made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Philippians 3.9, And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is, which will never do, but this righteousness is from God. Amen? This righteousness is from God. Be found in him not having mine own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. This is not just man's righteousness or religious righteousness, but when Christ is in you, you have his perfect righteousness in you. And we need it because our righteousness falls short. Our righteousness is not enough. In fact, the Bible tells us that our righteousness, apart from God, is as filthy rags in his sight. Can you imagine that? So our righteousness is insufficient. My righteousness and your righteousness has been polluted by sin. It doesn't measure up to God's standard. So we need this righteousness because my righteousness is not enough. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Titus 3, 5, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. This is a perfect righteousness. It's not a half and half. It is 100% perfect. The righteousness of Jesus is 100% perfect. Think of Jesus. He was perfect. He perfectly obeyed the law. Everybody agreed? From the time of his whole life, he perfectly obeyed the law. He was, lived a totally perfect life righteous life. And so when he went to the cross and purchased this perfect righteousness for us, God somehow, and I don't know how he does it, but transfers the righteousness of Jesus, that perfect obedience that Jesus uh, obey, uh, did when he was on the face of this earth, that perfect life obedience, that perfect righteousness to the law, that perfect, that perfection of Jesus, because of the cross, because he purchased it for me at the cross, somehow, by faith, God takes that perfect righteousness and gives it to me in Jesus. Amen. Can anybody say amen to that? Amen. <laughs> Not anything you have accomplished. You didn't do anything. Your righteousness falls short. My righteousness falls short. It's polluted by sin. But by, when Jesus died on the cross, he provided for us a perfect righteousness. Do you understand that, beloved? When Christ is in you, his perfect righteousness is in you. And it is, doesn't matter if you've been saved for a year or uh, 50 years. I've been saved over 50 years. If somebody gets saved today, 
God gives him the perfect righteousness of Jesus. I, he, I don't have any more perfect righteousness than that person who got saved today. Now, I have more sanctification, hopefully, along the way, and growth. But as far as righteousness in the sight of God, I have perfect righteousness. I am robed in his righteousness. In the book of Revelation, it talks about the saints having white robes. I think that's symbolic of the perfect, pure righteousness of Jesus. We are robed in his perfect righteousness. And this was purchased for us at the cross. And here's the good news. I don't earn it. I don't work for it. I just receive it by faith. That's the good news. How many people today go to church and if you ask them, how do you get righteous before God? They would say, well, you do the best you can, basically their righteousness, and you do live a good life. No, that righteousness will not do. They need Jesus' righteousness. <laughs> and it's a gift and not of works. Now, what does that mean to me as a Christian? Let me tell you what it means. Having his righteousness, Christ in me and Christ in you, and having his righteousness means I can rest in him. The Bible tells us in Hebrews, there is a rest for the people of God. I don't have to earn and work and try to get God to accept me. No, I'm accepted in the beloved. I am resting in Jesus. I am resting in his perfect righteousness. I don't have to perform or earn my way or do something to get God's approval. You know how long it took me after I got saved to understand this truth that I need just to rest in his righteousness? Somehow we got this thing, I gotta do this or do this and God will somehow accept me or have his stamp of approval on me. No, I'm accepted in Jesus because I have his righteousness. I can rest 100% in that righteousness. This perfect righteousness means you always stand completely in God's sight, totally righteous. 100% righteous because you have his righteousness. His righteousness never get, gets polluted like my righteousness. His righteousness is always perfect. His righteousness is always pure. And so I can stand in God's sight anytime, anywhere, even when I blow it. I still stand in God's sight, having his righteousness. Do you understand that today? It's a hard truth to understand because we're so uh, tender, but I got to earn my way or do something for God to accept me. No, God doesn't accept me because of my righteousness. He accepts me because of Jesus' righteousness. I stand in God's sight 24-7, even if I don't feel like it. Even if I don't feel like I'm righteous, I'm righteous. Even if I didn't do all righteous things today, I'm still righteous in God's sight because of Jesus' righteousness. This perfect righteousness gives me rest this perfect righteousness tells or gives me this uh, standing before God all the time as righteous as Jesus. Do you know God looks down at you and doesn't see you and your imperfections? He sees Jesus' righteousness. This perfect righteousness means I have total, and listen, this is important, a third thing, total and complete access to God. Total and complete access to God. There's a couple of verses in Ephesians, if I can think where they're at. I just want to share them with you. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 18. Listen to these verses. I don't have them on the screen. For through him, that's through Jesus, we both have access, both meaning Jews and Gentiles. Through him, Jesus, we both have access by one spirit to the Father. And then in, in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12, the same truth in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. No wonder the book, the writer of, to Hebrews said, let us come boldly 
to the throne of God. How can we come boldly and come with confidence? Not in my own righteousness. I can come boldly to God, boldly to know that he accepts me. I can come, I come right into his presence. I can approach him anytime, anytime, anywhere, anytime. I can approach him and come into his presence and he'll accept me. I have total access right in the throne room at all times. Why? Why do I have this confidence? Because I have his righteousness all the time. I think of our poor Muslim friends whom we love in the Lord. And by the way, God is saving many Muslims today. I'm hearing stories of the Lord Jesus appearing to Muslims in visions and dreams (laughs) and saying, I am the Son of God. He's appearing in dreams and visions to our Jewish friends, too, showing them he's the Messiah. These are the last days, beloved, let me tell you. Pastor Larry was telling me some stories that just, uh, it'll blow your mind of what God is doing across the world today. Supernatural things are happening. So, but they believe, Islam believes that only three times a day can you approach God, a five or ten minute window slot, that you gotta come to him and you gotta make sure that you come righteous and you're all pure and you gotta come in that 10 minute slot and and you can't come all the time. Oh, I'm so glad of the New Testament truth. That I have his righteousness, we need to share this message to our Muslim friends and to our Jewish friends that in Christ Jesus we are righteous before God because we don't have our righteousness, we have his righteousness. And I can rest in his righteousness and I can come directly into his presence all the time, any time, even when I don't feel like it, even when I blow it, <laughs> even when I feel crummy, I can still come into his presence. I have access. There's no interference between me and God. In the Old Testament, you know, remember the prayer of Daniel and he prayed and there was interference for 21 days. That's Old Covenant. I don't have any interference. There's no interference. Why? The blood of Jesus has cleared the way. And I have his righteousness and I come access. Now, when God begins to answer prayer, and I still need to be persistent because there's things that need to be moved around, right? On on the earth and we need to keep praying and God's gotta move this and move that. So we gotta keep praying. But as far as my access into God's presence, I come to him anytime. I I can approach him anytime because I have Jesus' righteousness. Now, let me just say this. Now, someone said, oh, well, that means that uh, I, I can live any kind of life. I, uh, and, and so, Listen, when you have his righteousness, it affects your righteousness. When you, are, when you have and understand Christ and the grace of God in Jesus, that I have his perfect righteousness, it motivates me out of that righteousness that I have to live a righteous life, not apart from Jesus, but in Jesus. It motivates me. Christ in you, what does it mean? You have his righteousness. Let me give you another dynamic application of this. Christ in you means you have his life in you. (laughs) Oh, Christian, you have life today. 1 John 5, in fact, you can jump jot down, John 1, 4 says, in him was life. 1 John 5, 11 and 12, this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. Boy, that's pretty cut, that's clear cut, isn't it? You either have the Son or you don't have the Son. Very clear. But if I have the Son, if Christ is in me, that means I have life. And the Greek word is zoe, right? Zoe, life. Now there's two kinds of life. There's physical life and there's spiritual life. When God created Adam in Genesis 2-7, you might mark that down, look at it later. When he created Adam, he created him and he breathed into Adam. And the Bible says he breathed into Adam the breath of life. In the Hebrew, 
Life is plural. So when God breathed into Adam, he breathed into him the breath of lives. <laughs> he breathed into him physical life and spiritual life. And when man sinned, he began to die. Death came. He began to die physically, and he died spiritually. And death in Scripture means separation. Okay? All the time. Death in Scripture always means separation. So, man began to separate, be separated from God because of his sin. Death, death, death. I mean, all, you look around right now, all you see is death, 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 death. But someday there's going to be life, 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 life. <laughs> On the new earth, life, 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 life. I have life now in me. I have Zoe life in me now. I have the life of God in me right now. I have spiritual life in me right now because I have Christ in me. And Christ in me means Christ's life is in me. Zoe life. And I need it because in Ephesians 2, it says, apart from Jesus. You ever read Ephesians 2, the first few verses? Boy, it's really depressing. It says, you have made alive who are dead in your sins. And he describes us, before we come to Christ, how we were dead in our trespasses and sins and being controlled by the enemy, by the prince and power of the air. And he goes on to say, we're children of disobedience and we're cut off from God and all the rest. And you were dead in your sins. But he's made you alive, it says. In Christ. He breathed into you. Do you remember right after the resurrection, Jesus came to the disciples and he breathed into them. And he, and he, and he, he said, he, he, he breathed on them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. I believe that was symbolic going back to Genesis 2 that it was saying that now because of Jesus, he breathes New life into people. Spiritual life. Zoe life. The life of God. This life makes my spirit alive. You see, Christ in me means my Christ is in my spirit. Understand that. Christ in you means Christ is in my spirit. Which means now my spirit is alive to God. Alive to his kingdom. Alive to what he is doing. Alive to what he is working in me. That life is in my spirit, and that life of God which is in my spirit wants to be released into every dead area in my life. <laughs> How many know we got some dead areas in our life? Areas that are separated from God because we've gone, gone our own way emotionally, every way, our thinking, everything, death, 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 because there's no connection with God. But life means connection with God. And when you have the life of Jesus in you, he wants to breathe his life and his influence into every part of your soul so that you can have the life of God and experience the life of God. Experiencing the life of God means I enjoy his presence. Experiencing the life of God means I enjoy his very being because he's full of life. And experiencing his life means experiencing his qualities, experiencing his nature, experiencing his love, experiencing his joy, experiencing his peace, experiencing his work and activities, experiencing his mighty strength, experiencing, experiencing his active presence in my life, experiencing his being, experiencing himself, the life of God the life of God I want more of the life of God to influence me to take over the dead areas in my life I have Zoe life in my spirit Christ in you means you can experience God's kingdom life the Bible says there's a kingdom of God there's a living kingdom of God and when you have his life you're alive to the kingdom <laughs> I, and when you more you the more you walk in that life and understand that life, you see the life of uh, the kingdom life around you. What God is doing around you, when you are connected to that life of God, you understand what God is doing around you, in you, through you, how God is doing it. That life will influence you. Kingdom life, Christ in you, means 
life. Jesus said this in John 10.10, 10, I have come that you might have life, Zoe, and have it to the fullest. See, all Christians have Zoe, life, because Christ is in you. But are we experiencing the full life of Christ? The full life of Jesus in my emotions. The full life of Jesus in my body. The full life of Jesus in my thinking. The full life of Jesus. Life. Zoe. Aren't you glad you have his life today in you? Allow that life to influence you. Allow that life to breathe into every part of your being. Allow that life to waken up every dead area to God. There's so many dead areas that are dead to God, but his life can quicken them and make them alive to God to know what he's doing and what he wants to do in and through your life. Hallelujah. We only have one life to live for Jesus, and I want his life to flow through me to other people. His life in me means I can have his life flow through me to other people. Waking up, give impart life to other people who need life. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Having Christ in you means having his perfect righteousness. Say that, perfect righteousness. Christ in you means having his life, Zoe, life in you. The life of God, not just the life of plant life or <laughs> physical life, but the life of God in you. Can you imagine that? Holy Spirit, give us more understanding about that. The life of God in you, Christian. He who has the Son has life. I've come that you might have life and more abundantly or to the fullest. Oh, I want that life, full life. You know, Christian, Beloved, you will never be a joyful Christian until you are experiencing the full life. For the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but joy, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Part of that life is love. When you have his life, you have his love. When you have his life, you have his joy. When you have his life, you have, you have his peace. The life of God should be influencing you as a Christian. Walk in him. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, Colossians 2, 6. Walk in him. Be close to him. Let him. We had a little booklet back there called himself. I think I'll try to get it again. Himself. The whole Christian life is experiencing Christ in your everyday walk. If you're here today and you're not sure you're saved, I hope everyone is. But if you have any doubts that you belong to Jesus and you want to make sure that Christ is in you, <laughs> would you lift up your hand and let me, give me the opportunity and the privilege to pray for you and just say, pray for me, Pastor. I want to make sure Christ is in me today before I leave this service. Anybody not sure in the house today? Everybody sure? How many believers say, I want to, I know Christ is in me, but I want to experience that living Christ in me every day. I want to have fresh encounters with that living Christ. Fresh experiences with that living Christ in me to allow him to be released in me, so to speak, to influence me and influence others. Let's stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you want to yield to him and surrender to him and say, Lord Jesus, I want to walk in you. I want to experience you, not just on Sundays and Wednesdays or whatever, but I want to experience you, Jesus, Christ in me every day. I want to know what that means, Christ in me every day. Just seek him today and he'll make himself. Maybe you need a fresh encounter. Maybe you need a fresh experience. Just seek him today. He's in you. He's in you. He wants to be released from within. Amen. Christ in you. 
Christ is in your spirit. The living Christ is living in your spirit every day. It's one thing to have Christ in me. It's another thing to experience the Christ in me, right? I want to experience that living Jesus, that living Christ who's living all the time in me, wants to, wants to release himself, wants to manifest himself. Maybe that's a better word. Wants to manifest himself in my life. Wants me to experience him in, a, in his fullness. Wow. The Christian life is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> Christ in you, the hope of glory. Lord, we thank you for the truth today. Help us to share that truth with others who have no hope. It says Christ in you, the hope of glory. Help us to share that truth with other people. In Jesus' name, help us to walk with the King and share that truth with others today. This week, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless. Have a good week. Thank you for watching the presentation from the New Life Christian Fellowship. We are located at 6235 West North Avenue, Oak Park, Illinois. For more information, call us at 708-848-2441. Thank you. May the Lord Jesus Christ truly bless you.